Jacob. So what we're gonna do is, uh, Casey and Corey came and sifted this yesterday. Nice, good feed. And I got these totes. We're gonna set up a small breeding operation and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that here. All right, I only need about four inches in each one of these at first. Just about four inches of food to start. Decided to go about three. Mostly because I'm not sure I'll have enough to do four in all these. All right, all set up. You can see the bottom one I put a little bit too little. So I put more in here, so I'll switch it out when I get home. Go home, let's get this dampened down and set up. All right, got them all home and wet it down. Just let it kind of soak in. This stuff takes a little bit while to soak in water. Brought home a praying mantis for some reason. He just kind of ended up in there. Maybe I've added too much water over here. We'll be okay though. I have some sawdust to mix in in case it's too wet. Man, he's pretty big. Wanna bite me? Now he looks a little shook up from the trip. Man. She's fat. She's getting ready to lay eggs. Real pretty. Really pretty. And hopefully she'll help with my fly problem. Alright, so I got some worms to inoculate these breeding tubs with. She got them from a Supposedly 2250 worms, 2250 worms. Got them from Green Greg's. Really nice guy. Actually called to talk to me, helped me out. Um, probably gonna order a big bulk order from him. Let's see if we have what looks like over 2000 worms right now. Not looking super promising. Eh, I don't know. Oh, there's another big ball you know yeah I think seeing as how small some of the worms are in there which is what he said it's gonna be mostly small Man, that's actually some really healthy worms man and his prices are good too I'm gonna have to get more from him yeah, Green Greg, Green Greg's. I'll put a link in the description. He's got some good videos too, good good information and stuff like that. All these worms look alive. There's no dead clusters. All right, so I'm gonna finish mixing up the tubs and then split these in about four even piles to put in there. So hopefully get a few hundred worms per per tub. I mean, if, if the count is right, I'll get 500 worms per tub, which would be great. But, who knows, I'm not going to take the time to count them. No one does. Okay, got all this stuff damped down. Mixed in some sawdust. Made it all the right consistency. Now to split up these worms. Alright, it's kind of hand splitting. Two of the piles look bigger, that's just because they have more of the bedding in them. Those other two back piles are pretty dense. Okay, now I'm just going to put them in cap these and then leave them alone for a while. They're digging down in pretty good. The reason we're making these breeding bins is um, not because our worms at the farm aren't reproducing fast enough. Well, a little bit that reason. But um, it's because winter's coming up and um, we're going to keep our farm, our farm worms warm enough to where they should stay, they shouldn't go full dormant. They shouldn't kind of be active the whole time but it's going to be about 60 degrees inside the, from what we we've estimated it'll be about 60 to 50 degrees inside there so they won't die they won't go full dormant but um they won't be reproducing as fast so so we get several shelves of these going this winter we should have a lot of worms to toss on the farm and be able to expand really fast um, late winter early spring next year all right that's done now, people probably ask why I didn't put holes in the bins, and uh, it's just kind of boring. You just you just don't need to. Um, they're mixed in with what they're going to eat and grow with. Same stuff they're going to eat at the farm, so there won't be any shock when we ever mix them in. Um, if you turn your beds pretty often, they're fairly well, well oxygenated. These lids will come off every once in a while as I add more material on top um, as they reproduce. And they won't, 
Well, they're gonna they're gonna have enough oxygen flow. You don't always have to put bins. I know there's lots of tutorials how to make bin, how to make worm bins, and you want to put a lot of holes in them. And yeah, that's best practice, but it's not necessary if you're careful and you get the consistency of your material right and the moisture levels just right. Everything will work out just fine without holes. Um, I'll do an update later. See how these turn out in a few months.